Hello everybody, welcome to number 27, I'm Jack. Now for a long time I have been longing after and hankering after a Honda NSX, the first generation of Honda NSX and I've kept an eye on prices throughout the years but it's just never quite worked out that I've been able to get one. But recently I have been absolutely shocked by the prices that they are commandeering and even more so at the difference in prices between the NSX and its competitor at the time, the Ferrari 348. With the NSX being worth a substantial amount more. So in this video, I'll be doing a market analysis. So we'll have a look at how many cars are on the market at the moment of each of the NSX of the 348, how much they are, try and come up with an average price, and then try and work out why there is that discrepancy between the two. So we'll have a look at some stats. So the original production numbers for both cars, how much they cost at launch, and then talk about the relative merits of the 348 and the NSX. I have driven both, so I have personal experience of that, and I'll include a couple of clips from some of my videos while we go through this. Lastly, I'm gonna tell you three reasons why I think there is this discrepancy in values between the two cars. The first one might be quite familiar to you, or you might already be expecting it, but the second two reasons are gonna be a bit more surprising, I think. Let's compare prices. So I'm looking on Piston Heads, which here in the UK is one of the best sort of sources in terms of looking at the prices of secondhand of these kinds of cars. And we'll see how many are listed. We can see here there's actually quite a big selection of 348s, I would say. Let's quickly go through them. So a, this car, 7,500 miles, I don't know if that can be right. That's extremely low mileage and only 65,000 pounds. We'll discount the Tom Hartley car because that's a GT, so not really representative. POA will discount as well. Ferrari Centre has a couple of cars. This one looks great value, 41,000 pounds, but for a Ferrari, hugely high mileage of 72,000 miles. And oh, I love the 355 wheels. I think they really lift these cars and make them look so much better. But you can see that prices for 348s look like they have risen, like everything else on the market, because when you looked before, there's a few cars in the upper 70s, and if you looked only a few months ago, uh, certainly last early last year, you could find a lot of cars for between 40 and 50,000. Now there's quite a few well above that value. Let's take a look at the NSXs now, and I am looking at, I'm using piston heads again. I have looked at Auto Trader as well, but the spread of cars is roughly the same, so this should be representative. Immediately, it is clear that there's a lot fewer of them. Um, this first car, 89,000 manual, wow, the prices are definitely higher, 94,000. The first car is sold, so we won't include it. This is still for sale, and it looks like a great example there at Four Star Classics, 95,000 pounds. Modern one excluded. This one, I've already looked, it's sold. I don't believe that that was really up for 45,000 pounds. I think that's just an advert to um, try and get people who are selling to contact this dealer, so we'll exclude that. 70,000 pounds, 55,000 miles, great, but a modified, it has a body kit and so on, and it is an auto as well. Uh, so quite a high price if you start to consider those things. £90,000 for this one. And yes, okay, super low mileage, but again, it is an auto. This looks like a good car. Uh, £80,000 and 31,000 miles. It does have some different wheels, but they're pretty tasteful. Um, I mean, still not cheap, but okay. I can see that it's actually an import uh, and does have some mods, although fairly restrained by the looks of it in terms of the mods. So... Nice car, but again, not cheap at that kind of money. Okay, so that's really interesting. So there are 13 348s on the market at the moment here with an average value of £59,000. Whereas there are only four NSXs actually for sale and the average value of those is £84,000. And that is odd that there's such a big spread in values between the two, but let's have a look at some of the reasons why. The 348 was produced between 1989 and 1995, and in that time, 8,444 were produced. It had 290 horsepower, 295 horsepower, although the figures from Ferrari at the time aren't the most reliable. And the launch price, or launched in 1989, but in 1990, where we're comparing with the NSX, the price was $101,000 plus options. The NSX, on the other hand, 
was produced between 1990 and 2005, so full 15 years. In that time, 18,440 were produced and the launch price was just over $60,000. So it was a much cheaper car and many more were produced. So in theory, that should give an edge in terms of pricing to the 348. So I do love an NSX and it was quite revolutionary at the time. It really, it really gave the established manufacturers a bit of a jolt because Honda, the little upstart, produced something that in many ways was better than what was already being made by the likes of Ferrari, Porsche, Lamborghini and so on. This was the first all aluminium bodied car. It had an all aluminium V6 which had variable valve timing. And certainly in terms of usability, quality, the interior, it was leagues ahead of the Ferrari. And the drivetrain was also a better package. So the engine was arguably better. It was certainly more efficient and more modern than the 348 lamp. But the gearbox was miles ahead in terms of usability. So where does that leave the 348? It looks like there's very few areas in which it could actually be better than an NSX, but you would be wrong. For a start, the myth that the NSX was a better handler is simply not true. Yes, the first versions of the 348 did have quite tricky on the limit handling, but Ferrari subsequently changed the mounting points of the rear suspension and the geometry of the 348 and made it a really, really good handler. So much so that at the time, Autocar did a test between the two. Uh, so this was in 1993, Stephen Sutcliffe compared the NSX and the 348. And although he agreed that the NSX was a much more complete car, in terms of outright handling, the 348 was a better car. The chassis was a little bit sharper and the steering was just wondrous. It wasn't bad on the NSX, but being assisted as against a non-assisted setup on the 348, it just wasn't quite as good. Also, Evo did a retrospective, a retrospective even, in 2015. Henry Catchpole drove all the cars from a 308 all the way to a 458. He concluded that one of the highlights of the day was the steering on the 348. Not only was it a be the best of the bunch, but it was actually probably the best steering he had ever experienced. So certainly, the 348 does have something going for it if you're looking for a keen and rewarding drive. Not just that, but this was the last car that was produced under Enzo's stewardship and direction fully. Well, it was the last V8, the small Ferrari, that was produced under his stewardship. So surely that should give it some level of cachet. So the 348 then was produced in far lower numbers than the NSX. It was arguably a more rewarding drive. It has the cachet of being a Ferrari as against a Honda. So why is it then that there are so many more for sale on the market and that they are so much cheaper than the NSX? So I'm going to tell you three reasons why that is. So firstly, it is undeniable that the NSX is a more usable car and one that is perhaps easier to care for. If we look, for example, at service costs, there is the dreaded cam belt service on the 348, which means that the whole engine has to be taken out. But the difference isn't quite as great as you might expect. A cam belt change on a 348 is around 1,500 pounds and up. That's a similar sort of price to what it is for an NSX, but there is a big difference. The NSX one has to be done every six years or every 90,000 miles, whereas on the 348, it is every three years or every 18,000 miles. It does make you wonder why there is such a difference. They're both cam belts on, on engines. Why is it so much more frequent on the Ferrari? I think there's also more 348s on the market because the types of buyers are different. Anyone who wanted to buy an NSX, especially years ago, they weren't really drawn by the lure of the name of the Honda. They just love the original design uh, and, the, and the engineering behind the car, as well as the, the driving abilities. They almost did an admiration for it. Whereas with the Ferrari, it was a childhood thing that you grew up with a Ferrari poster having to, have a, having to have a Ferrari. And I think that the reality for a lot of people that eventually did buy the 348 is that A, they were expecting too much. B, they were maybe put off by how difficult it is to maintain and the lack of quality, the cheapy interior and so on. So as a, as a result, there is much more turnover of those cars. 
Maybe a less obvious reason, though, and something that doesn't immediately spring to mind, is that the NSX was produced over a period of 15 years. So its competitor is not only the 348, it's also the 355 and the 360. It spans three model ranges in the Ferrari family. So if you add those up, you actually get a total production number of Ferrari models in the NSX run of 36,000 versus 18,000 NSX. So it could be argued that the NSX actually is a rarer car than the equivalent Ferrari. The last reason why I think that NSX values have spiked so high and even higher than at least 348s in terms of Ferraris is to do with culture and it is right behind me and it's the original Gran Turismo which came out in the mid 90s. I played it, lots of guys my age did. Um, we were maybe in our mid 20s or late teens and are now, it's an age range now of people who are now between 40 and 60 and have lots of disposable income. And this game and other games of the time really made Japanese cars uber cool, especially the JDM ones produced only for the Japanese market. The NSX wasn't primarily top of the tree when it came to, to Gran Turismo. Uh, it was more some of the Nissans, really, the Skylines, but it does have a halo effect. And as a result, Japanese cars have become really, really cool with the younger generations, much more so than they were with the older generations that craved the Ferraris and the Porsches. Doesn't mean that Ferrari and Porsche still don't have a cachet, but certainly the Japanese one has grown exponentially. Now, all this doesn't mean that I'm trying to say that the NSX isn't worth the money that it's commanding at the moment. As a matter of fact, I don't really think many cars are worth that money, and I think they're all due a correction of some kind because the values are just crazy. But it is a brilliant car. It was a trendsetter. But if you look at it, really, maybe uh, the main reasons why it is so much higher than the 348 is not just that it is an incredible car and head and shoulders above it, it certainly is in some areas. I think it is also to do with the fact that actually you're given a much wider choice and a much bigger number of Ferraris to choose if you're looking to get either an NSX or the equivalent Ferrari, and plus just the halo effect of GT, Gran Turismo, and all that kind of stuff. I think it's just interesting to, to look at those reasons. You might completely disagree with me, in which case I'd love to hear from you. Uh, do tell me your thoughts. Thank you so much for having a look at this vlog with me, and I really look forward to seeing you for the next one, and I really do hope one day to own an NSX. And why is that odd when I've just been saying that really 348 values should be the same? Well, for me personally, the NSX, I don't know, I've just always hankered after one, I suppose, and I've never owned one, whereas I've, I've had Ferraris before and I have one right now, so I do want to have an NSX. Thank you all so much again for watching this vlog. Look forward to seeing you for the next one.